What is good, everybody? This is your boy, Bass, and we're on part number four. I'm going to be texturing the pistol, going over a couple of basic programs that I'm going to be using is Photoshop CS2 and Marmoset. I'm going to get to explaining Marmoset a little bit later. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, you're going to want two things. You're going to want the UV map from the low poly and the AO bake from the high poly. Putting the AO bake as the first layer and putting the multiply filter on it, it will bring down the shadows. And then putting the UV map at the bottom. And you can also put it in the middle if you have any type of texture that you're using as far as a base color for the model. Right now I created my own metal texture as you can see. But usually a 50% gray on a gun is really not that bad. You can kind of make it a little bit darker and then chip away at it yourself. Um, I'll get into spec map once I get it down packed to where I would want it. I'm still currently trying to master spec mapping. But again, you're going to want these three basic stables in your texture map. AO at the top with a multiply filter, your basic color of your gun, and then the UV map at the bottom. If you want to copy the UV map and put it over the basic texture so that you're able to see lines and edges and stuff, that'll be good for you as well. As you can see with my texture, I do have the UV map above the metal texture that I created. Now, explaining the layer map is really a, its own video in itself, but I'm going to try to break it down as quickly as possible with you understanding it. So you're going to want to put a layer mask on top of, well not really on top of it, you just want to add it to the metal texture. Once you do that, black adds on color that's below the metal texture. So I have a lighter gray at the bottom because that's the color that I want the damage to be. Now adding black lets that color seep through. White basically patches the color up. If you want to see as it that way. So it's like I'm it's like I'm creating a hole in the texture. I am scraping it away with the black and then with the white. It's like they're kind of trying to clean it up or like patch it up. Now in this concept I'm using it as I'm gonna put it on with hundred percent opacity. Then I'm going to go back to white and I'm going to try to patch it up so that it's almost like it's a wear and tear, but it's in stages, if you get what I mean. So it's like it started one place and then it's not completely wear and tear on the other, but then you don't want to add too much. But it also depends on uh, the, the concept, what the art director wants. With this stuff, you're going to have to listen to your lead. But in this project, I don't have a lead, so I have to listen uh, to my own intuition of what I want the model to look like. I'm using Marmoset right here. It's a good tool to view the normal maps and everything else in a better lighting situation. But we'll get to that a little bit later. I'm going to start off with the Piccanini rail. Now, I did notice something is that I kind of have the Piccanini rails upside down. I thought I flipped them. I don't feel like going all the way back so I'm gonna have to work off knowing that I flipped the Piccanini rails and that they're kind of upside down but again I used 100% opacity using the black and now I'm chipping away to try to get the wear and tear to look as clean as possible and as believable now to understand you know where I'm coming from as far as like wear and tear you're going to want a square brush a round brush can only give you as much detail as possible when you're talking about damage so that's why you want a square brush because a little bit more sharp at the edges you can kind of change the orientation of what's going on um, and you can actually create your own brush based off a square brush you can go in and put on shape dynamics and scatter and noise and it can really add concepts that you are not able to get with a round uh, brush. Now, if you're a little bit lost on what I mean by wear and tear and damage, you know, that's okay. You just have to keep in your mind that if you have an object and, you, and then if you was to just drop it on the ground and it was to, you know, have damage or you was to slide it on the ground or throw it or toss it or skip it or whatever, if you was to do that, where would the damage end up? Most likely on protruding edges and protruding parts on the object. Um, 
if you drop something that has you know squares in it or square outsides usually the corners will be places to where it receives most damage not really on the flat surface the flat surface can have damage but not as significant as the edges and this is what I'm keeping in mind as I'm texturing the picking any rails right now again adding in with the black and then taking away with the white now I'm gonna go over the square brush and a little bit of detail I do have one right now but I'm gonna just make one on the fly adding in shape dynamic scattering and noise you can actually bring up the jitter and the shape dynamic just to give it a little bit of offset as far as damage right here I added on with the black and I took away with the white sometimes the layer mask it acts a little bit funny you might have to invert it um, you might have to add on with white and take away from black I had to do this a couple of times but right now I'm adding on with the black and the opacity is not a hundred percent for the simple reason is that I want the lines to be thin in certain areas and if I'm taking away I might take away from the line too much but I know since I'm using the Wacom tablet that it's with pin pressure so that I don't have to press as hard I can just you know do like swiping motions or something so that it's not as dark as I want it to be and I really don't have to take away from it at this point in time I can do it a little bit later now if I want to describe the Wacom tablet if you don't know what that is it's basically a tablet that you use in order to if you're drawing with Photoshop usually graphic designers have this tablet uh, graphic artists have this tablet um, I was able to get one all you really have to do with the tablet is you have to have a driver go to um, you can probably type it in Google you can probably Google it type in Wacom tablet drivers find one that allows you to just use it on the fly now I was hoping that the iPad would come out with something like this to where you know it can be accessible as far as Wacom tablets with your Mac they haven't yet I haven't heard anything about it it would be something that would be very useful because then probably I would want to get an iPad for that but right here I'm adding damage to the capsules and you can actually copy damage over if you want to be lazy um, I've seen people that have done this they probably do it in the industry themselves just to cut back on time but I'm adding in damage and I'm gonna take it away based upon how I feel and what I'm thinking it would look like right here I'm taking away uh, lower the opacity you don't always have to go up top to lower the opacity there's hotkeys that you can set in I'm just taking it away gradually so it's not you know as noticeable in like one area that you know one area is thick with damage and the other area is really thin right here I took off the the extra UV layer just to make it a PNG so I can drop it in the marmoset I'm about to see what it looks like going right to the section that I was just texturing over there beside the uh, capsule on the top and the bottom right here now I did end up changing the brightness of the metal texture because I felt as though it was a little bit too dark I wanted it a little bit lighter but again I did hand paint this myself with a couple of brushes it didn't really take that long you just have to know how to trick your mind right here I'm adding in um, the white bottom the texture that's below the metal texture and heavy for a specific reason just to show you the different levels of wear and tear now notice I'm taking away a lot because I know that I have opacity at a, at a lower level so it can look as believable as I want it to just as long as I do it the right way now people can even see it as dirt, grunge, damage you just have to think about it in your mind and not really think about you know making light scrapes sometimes it can work but a lot of the times you're going to want to google it you're going to want to look it up when I when I see damage on something that has been dropped on concrete I mean you know like it's, it's something noticeable now again I'm using CS2 the zoom factor in CS2 is a little bit different 
had to get used to that. Had to get used to using the screen in the top right hand corner to move certain stuff around. Right here, I thought about adding in a little bit of dirt, maybe some rust, just to see what it would look like on certain uh, edges. Maybe water got right there, it got wet or something. I'm kind of like pulling the dirt towards certain spots. And I'm going to add dirt right here. If you want to call it a hammer next to the hammer or where I stitched the hammer in in part number one. Then I'm going to drag it out some. Now this is probably the most hardest part of it is creating a texture that is believable. Now I've been told, I think I said this maybe in part number one or two. I've been told that by Professor Grinsby, he's one of the hardest professors in game design. He said that, you know, I'm a good modeler. He said, you know, all your models are solid. You know, you never run to any problems. Everything that you set in your mind to, to model, you generally achieve it. But the only problem is you have bad textures. It's like a Ferrari with a bad paint job. He said, every time I grade your stuff, you know, he's heartbroken because the, the modeling part of it is so good. But the texture part has no effort. And I really had to sit down and watch videos and ask people and uh, Twitter and everything else just to understand, like, what am I doing wrong? But you really have to immerse yourself in your craft. You know, you really have to literally sit down some days and just go on Google and just type in, you know, uh, damage on boxes or uh, metal damage or whatever the case is just to understand what is happening and what is going on but again that is up to the artist to further yourself to get to the next level this is what i'm currently trying to do and i'm using youtube as a tool to display you know certain things that i'm working on right now right now i'm changing the gloss a little bit and making sure that the texture is looking you know just right for portfolio purposes this is where i'm at right now as far as the texture of the sci-fi pistol Hope you guys like it. You know, again, I'm growing. I'm trying to get better as an artist. This will be in my portfolio. I will link it in the description once it's done or on my actual YouTube. Or maybe I'll do a video once it's done just so people can see it. If this video has helped you out in any type of way, definitely hit that like button. To see part number five, subscribe for more videos. This is your boy Bass. Graduating May 16th, class of 2014. Thank you for supporting.